Praise God. Good evening, Facebook family and friends. Thank God for you. Thank you, Lord, for, for being with us today. Hi, guys. Amen. This is um, our list of chronicles, and we're going to keep continuing just a little further with our love language, a little in-depth study on um, and, um, words of affirmation. Yes, tonight we are going to talk about words of affirmation and just, <laughs> yeah, words of affirmation. Words of affirmation are a, it, 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 it's such a mighty piece because we don't realize how our work, the Bible tells us death and life is in the tongue and we need to be mindful of the words that we speak so think about the power that the word has if God can say uh, let there be and there was so how awesome is that to know that Words have so much power. Amen. And you know, and when we think about words of affirmation, this this right here is a piece. I thought that uh acts of service was a beast, but this piece right here, this is something. This is something. All right, let me pray. Um, by your heads, eternal God our Father, Lord, we thank you God for this day. We thank you, Father, for blessing us. We thank you, God, for keeping us up until this very hour. We pray now, O oh God, that thy word will go forth, O oh God, and that it will land on good ground and that it will land on good soil, O oh God. We pray, O oh God, that you would honor what is said here today, God, that it will land, O oh God, upon the hearts of your people, O oh God, that they will be able to see the light and shine the light, O oh God, in dark ears, O oh God, that they will be strengthened and empowered, O oh God, by what is said, made whole, O oh God, and set free, O oh God, by what is said on tonight, God, that we may share with one another and grow iron sharpening iron father in the name of jesus god we thank you we praise you father we bless your name forever in jesus name we pray amen and praise god amen praise god hi my brother mr l l o p hi my cousin how you doing there hi cuzzo to go go so tonight we're going to just talk about um words of affirmation and we need to understand that again death and life are in in, in the power of the tongue mm -hmm. and and we need to understand that this, this your words your words have so much weight mm -hmm. they can be a, a heavy weight or they can be weightless that's right that's right that's right Amen. And the thing is this, you think about it. I've, I've never had, I thank God I never grew up. I mean, it has been many things that um, has, um, that has happened in my life as a, a child growing up. Mm -hmm. But I've never had, um, I've never experienced the heaviness of words. And what do what do I mean by that? I've never been in a situation where I, um, I've been ever told you will never amount to anything. Mm. That's right. That's right. I've never been told that you are good for nothing. So, um, I never told. I never was told um, you just like your daddy. I wasn't. I wasn't told. I wasn't told. Oh, you're just like your mom. I, I, I thank God that I did not have these words because when you're dealing with words of affirmation, the Bible says, so a man thinketh, so is, he. so is he. And I'm so big on words of affirmation. We joke and we like, oh, you're so silly. You're so stupid. But you need to really be mindful. You need to be mindful of, uh, of your words of your words and the thing is this you need to be mindful in who you say these words to mm -hmm. that they don't start to subscribe to these words mm -hmm. or 
uh, live out these words, I guess, for a lack of better, uh, a lack of, you know, let, 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 let me phrasing. Say this. Let me say this. Let me say this. Words do more than convey information. All right. The power of our words can actually destroys, destroy one's spirit, even stir up hatred and violence. Mm -hmm. and, we, and, and, we, and we've seen that happen. We've seen that happen in this day and age right now. They not only exasperate wounds, but inflict them directly. Of all the creatures on this planet, only man has the ability to communicate through the spoken word. The power to use words is a unique and powerful gift from God. And so when that scripture said you, you, that, that death and life is in the power of the tongue, you, and, and the Bible goes on to say that the tongue is an unruly member. And the thing about the spoken word, man, you can make your mouth say anything. You, you, and whether it be the lie, be a lie or a tr or a truth, you can make your mouth, and, and it can cause a whole lot of ruckus, a whole lot of disturbance. You know, the old saying says, "Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me." Whoever came up with that lie straight from lie. the pit, straight from the pit, because you know, sticks and stones, yeah, they break my bones, but I'll heal from that. But if, but words linger. You understand the pain that words cause you know the damage runs deep you know and sometimes it can be healed for, for a period of time there's there, there won't be a healing for a period of time when it comes to you know somebody saying things to you you know so like pastor dana said you know throughout her life those things have not been spoken to her as a kid growing up you know now some people might have said some things to her as an adult but by then listen i, I got the <laughs> My mind is made up. That's so it. no matter what you say to me or about me, I have the power to either believe what you say, let what you say, you know, in to hurt me, or I can choose to ignore it and be like, oh, yeah, the joke's on you. That's you it. Know, that's all you got because I know who I am. And that's the thing. We need to start recognizing and knowing who we are as a person, as a people, and then knowing who we are in Christ Jesus. That's where your strength lies. Knowing who you are in Christ Jesus. Um, I told you before. I'm really big on um, affirmations. Um, and uh, as I've shared with you, um, I've been walking this faith walk with uh, Dana's babies. Um, and I have. Um, I'm building an affirmation wall because mm -hmm. of the community that I serve. Um, I was reading articles where. Um, I read an article on Facebook where um, someone asked the people, I think it was like in Western New York uh, community, community board or whatever, she asked them, please stop cursing at your children while they're on the Zoom with their teacher. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, really? You want to tell them to sit there behinds now and listen, but you need to be my... See, the thing is this, and you have to understand those words, those words that tear down, those are generational things because, and it, and it shows a lack of the ability to communicate effectively. You know, um, Jeremiah 31 and 3 says, the Lord has appeared of old to me saying, yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. Mm -hmm. Listen, that Bible don't lie. A kind word turns away wrath. It's done. It's done. It's a a kind word turns away wrath. So we need to be mindful how we deal and relate to each other. Um, and it takes a lot. Um, you know, when you go out or when you first start dating. And, and you go out with the guy and you go out with the girl and y'all are like <laughs> and, 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 and all this giddiness you need to be keeping that same energy mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. dealing with other people I know that people can be a pill I do know mm -hmm. but then you need to understand what you're dealing with and what you're operating with and the thing is this, if they don't know better, how can they do better? Right, right. Because this is what I subscribe to. You told me that I would never be anything. You told me I would never amount to anything. Um, you know what I'm saying? You told me I was no good like my mama. You told me I was no good like my daddy. You told me I was no good. 
You told me you only wanted to sleep with me. You didn't want to have kids with me. All these things. All these things. And, and, and you need to be mindful also of the people that are saying these things to you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Why are they spewing venom? Who said these things to them? What make them, what makes them seem like they are unworthy? Because the thing is this, we went through this thing, um, um, well, they think they better than me. They act like they better than me. Listen, that is your perception. That's your perception. Nobody can dictate your perception about somebody. And, I, I, and I'm going to tell you, you need to be careful with your perception. Mm -hmm. Because the enemy can construe things That's right. That's right. to cause division. And you'll feed right into it. <laughs> you'll feed right into it. And, and so you need to be mindful. And it's so funny, I thought about that. Nobody can make you feel any type of way unless you let them. Mm -hmm. Remember the saying, uh, Pastor Lewis said, sticks and stones will um, break my bones, but words will never hurt. Remember the saying, rubber and glue, anything you say bounce about me, me, bounce off me and back on you. There you go. Mm -hmm. There mm -hmm. you go. This that same concept when you're dealing with that. Mm -hmm. let, me, let, me, let me share this. In, in Hebrews, 11 and 3 in Hebrews 11 and 3 it says this through faith we understand that the words the worlds were formed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear in, in, in other words we she's pointed out God spoke things into existence as well as created the world now let me hit you with this let me show you with this there's a spirit that comes with the spoken word Especially when you start speaking negativity, you're going to get a negative spirit. You understand that 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 um, can be cast upon people. Um, so you have to understand that you know you got to choose your words wisely because anytime you look at little you know little hokey, hokey pokey movies on TV, little scary movies on TV, what they call inc incantations or whatever called. You know, before they can put a spell on you, they got to speak some words. They ain't just waving their hand, but they got to speak some words. Mm -hmm, you understand? Mm -hmm. You know, so we, as, as the people of God, the Bible says that he's given us the power and authority to use his word. He says, speak my words only. You understand? So we need to always be building each other up. You understand? We need to always um, affirm people in the positive. You understand? Um, I, I, I believe in... Um, Criticism, I do believe in that because you know, understand corrective criticism can can help people. You understand? You know, everybody can take it, but I rather that you tell me the truth. You know, understand? Help me, you know, out of the darkness into the light. But but if you just want to spew venom like on Pastor Dana said, you know, to try to tear me down instead of trying to build me up, then there that there's where the problem lies. Okay, our words have the power to destroy and the power to build up. You know, if we look in Proverbs 12 and 6, you know, it talks about building up one another. It talks about um, the spoken word, the power of God. Let me just share with you right quick. The words of the wicked lie and wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright delivers them. So, <laughs> baby, I just want to tell you this in love. And then everything you saying in love is tearing me down. Where that's at? Where that's at? You understand? So we, 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 we need to be mindful how we speak to one another and how we speak to people. Go ahead. You know, so um, words of affirmation, they count. You understand? You can get some children together um, and, you know, speak life into them. You can, you can turn a whole situation around with a bunch of angry kids third graders, fourth graders, by beginning to speak life, by beginning to say, all right, all right, you know, all y'all acting like animals in here. That's that's not going to work. Right. That's not going to work. You right. understand? Right. So right. It, it's in your approach. So, I, um, it's so funny because while he was saying that, uh, um, two scriptures came to mind. It says, do not speak, is Proverbs 23 and 9. Mm -hmm. Well, Proverbs tells you a lot how to relate. 
to people. Proverbs 23 and 9, it says, Do not speak to fools, for they will scorn your prudent words. Mm. <laughs> and it is Proverbs 26 um, and 4. Do not answer a fool according to his folly, or you yourself will be like him. Mm. Mm. See, you want me to get that? Mm. You can get it because you know. Listen, don't answer a fool according to his folly. In other words, folk will just say stuff to entice you, to get a to get a reaction out of you. You understand? You you know um. Sometimes you just got to look at the source for one. And sometimes you got to weigh that thing out and be like, that don't even deserve an answer. I'm going to give you this, this, is what, this is one of my biggest pet peeves. Is the elevator working today? Yeah. Are you sure? What you asked me for if you're not going to believe me? You asked me, I gave you an answer. Now you're going to ask me, am I sure? Don't ask me. That's my biggest pet peeve. You understand? I gave you the answer. You asked me, was it working? I said, yes. Then you asked me, was I sure? I'm not going to speak if I'm not sure. I'm going to say, I, I'm not really sure. I'm going to say, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Y'all help me. Y'all talk back to it. <laughs> maybe you see it differently. And it's so funny because he that's his pet peeve, but he is the, the, the biggest uh, assaulter. He'll be like, are you sure? About what? It, listen. About what? It, it depends on what we're talking about. Oh, this what? Babe, did you do this? About what? I don't have my laundry list today. Uh. But he is like, his pet peeve is what he is like really good at. And then so, and then I'll give him the look. You know that look. And he'll be like, what's that look for? <laughs> uh oh. Yeah. So. No. No Facebook. <laughs> no. Understand? Yeah. Facebook. No. My brothers and sisters. Yeah. And the thing is this, and I'm I'm guilty of it. I'm guilty of it, but I'm 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 a little bit more inconspicuous with my stuff. I just go check. <laughs> <laughs> so we need to be, you know, you need to be mindful of these words of affirmation. Mm. You know, I I, I love it because. We, we we come in contact with so many people that have so many negative things to say. Nothing positive. Even in this. And the thing is this. What I've learned and I'm still learning in everything. In everything. Look for God. Mm -hmm. Look for mm -hmm. God. That's right. That's right. Look, Look for God. And if that's not enough positivity to make you want to um, check some things out I don't know what to tell you hmm. look, for be my, look for God that's right. that's right. who's your source because we already know that the enemy comes to what? kill steal and destroy so many times we think that it's uh, our material things you want that answer, really, Brother Jackie? Brother Jackie, you know I'm going to answer you. But the Bible tells us to kill, that he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And the thing is this. We look at the things that we set up. But it's really you. The power is in. It's you that he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He comes to kill and steal your, your hope, your faith, your passion, your desire, your purpose. Your joy, all the things that's within you, he come to take, try to uh, block your Holy Ghost. He trying to block your God factor. Amen. That's what he come. That that's that's what he come to do. So in everything, look for God. The Bible says, "Submit unto each other." How does this work in a healthy marriage? How does this work in a healthy marriage? Submitting one to listen. I'm. I, I, you want to answer this? I, okay. So, I think that it becomes balance. And the thing is, is when you know how you work together. Like I always, I'll tell anybody. 
he and I are yin and yang. He and I are. Why? Because I know in the areas that I am, and I just shared this with my mom today. I said, he is so strong in some areas that I'm just oblivious to. So in those areas, <laughs> boom, you have at it. And then there's some areas that he knows that I'll get the job done. And he's like. So my thing is, is, I think you need to play your lane and play your strengths. Because how can two walk together unless they agree? There has to be some meshing. Because they're no longer two, but they're one. So you should be submitting to each other and concede that maybe, you know what? She is a little bit stronger in this area, in this area than I best. am. Yeah. Yeah, you have to know. You have to know what you're working with and who you're working with. You know, um, and if there's a question, you understand, I wouldn't rush into the question in the heat of the moment. I I will wait. You understand? I will wait and pray. You know, because everybody can't have civil conversations in the heat of the argument you know, or the heat of the moment. Sometimes you just gotta back up and wait till things cool off. If, um, in Genesis, it says that God came to Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. You understand? So some things you gotta wait until they back off. You, you said that the marriage was already healthy. It's, it's a healthy marriage, so you got to play on each other's strength and weaknesses. You know, and a lot of times, my approach to a lot of things is, you know, I try to weigh out whatever the situation is, and I try to look at something that can relate to it from the scripture. You know, you can't have a problem or a situation that you can't find an answer in the word of God. You know, I tell people that all the time. You, you, it's in there. You just have to be willing to search it out. So I will wait. And then, you know, my latest question on the table right now is how much room does the enemy need in order to get in? How much room does the enemy need in order to get in? And, and I say that based on the fact that you know, she said, how can two walk together unless they touch and agree? So we are agreeing in certain areas on certain things, but sometimes, I don't know, blame it on the moon, blame it on the 800, blame it on something that somebody is biting or snap, snapping, you know, at the other party. And you're like, well, where is this coming from? You understand? And the enemy saying, bite back, yell back, bite, you know. And you're like, no, I'm not going down that lane, you know. But in order to get that person to see that what they're doing, you say, how much room does the enemy need to get in? You understand? Because here we are walking together, agreeing with one another. But every so often throughout the day, I ask a question. And obviously, you don't like my question because you biting at me and snapping at me. And I don't think it take all of that, you know, or, or vice versa. So, you understand, you and the Bible says that the strong have to bear the infirmities of the weak. There's going to be some days when you strong and they're weak. There's going to be some days that they're strong and you weak. But you have to recognize what day it is <laughs> and what position they play. Huh? No. <laughs> Bro, Jackie, hope that helped you, brother. So, we're talking about just affirmations and, and, and how does... Um, what what how does the words of affirmation play in, come into play uh we know that the words of affirmation um are a huge way to convey love affection respect esteem honor and everything else that's good to affirm you, tell you bro. how do you keep people out of your marriage <laughs> first of all keep your marriage between the two of you. Keep Listen. Your marriage between the two of you. In other words, what is been, going on? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. You better not tell nobody but God. Bingo. <laughs> you better not tell nobody but God. You need to, um, you understand, um, you know, emotions made a song, don't ask my neighbor. Don't tell your neighbor. Don't tell your mama and them. See, because everybody mama and them can't be trusted. Everybody mama and them can't, you know, um, Praise because God. they're not biased. Pra praise for God. One. Praise God for my Aunt Lillian. God bless her soul. Now she was one. She give you both sides. She give you straight up with no chaser. And she tell you about you. 
and tell you about them and tell and tell you <laughs> that's just how she was. She said, Well, you know how you are. You emotional. You were very emotional on your sleep. So maybe they didn't mean in the context that they said it, but because you so emotional, um, you, that's the way you took it. You understand? Know oh yeah, she she was like that. So but so, so the thing what I'm saying is that you can't bring everybody into your into your relationship, especially into your marriage, because everybody don't have your best interest at heart. You understand? Know and like she said, some people are just biased, and so I no. Uh, Better not tell nobody but God. And me and God have had many a conversation, and me and Yvonne has had many a conversation. Yep. God and I always have conversations. Always. Always. Because this thing is unruly. That's what the Bible t- This here, well, I, I say God right on my tongue. And, and, and the thing is this, one of the... My, when we got married, my cousin was like, family is wonderful, but keep family out of your business. Your business. Point blank, period. And um, I share with you, um, at the beginning of, um, when we were just talking marriage talk, one day we were just having marriage talk. I think, Brother Jackie, you were on there. And we were talking about how my God sister um, overheard a conversation between the young lady and her mother. And the mother was giving her this advice and my guy said was like she was like, oh my God, that is all wrong. Because you don't you need to be mindful who you're getting that advice from. Are you getting one somebody who's been stung and beat up by love, who just don't want to love no more, walking around with an old bitter honey? She just old bitter, you know? So then you gotta you're taking on their bitterness, and then you're taking on his oh, I'm through with love. Women ain't no good, men ain't no good. I'm gonna go with the we not doing that same sex thing. Okay? We not doing that. But the thing is this. Don't put them in your business. You better be mindful what pastors you're talking to. Sure you're right. And what wise counsel you are you seeking see. from. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. You, you need to really be mindful because, um, <laughs> you know, you out talking to them and many things can happen so you need to be mindful i i think that when you are able to have a a generalized um conversation with people that are like-minded i think it's always especially for newlyweds because marriage is work we, we we the wedding is wonderful but you got to live this thing out after the wedding and we don't realize how much work and effort goes into being married. The first sign of trouble. Oh my God, he overdrew the uh, bank account. She overdrew the bank account. Okay, well they're accustomed to spending their own money. And you have to understand why they always tell you the first 10 years are the most uh, turmoil. It's oh, be- seven. It's, well, seven okay. is the seven year itch. But it's the first 10 years because you're still really learning the ins and the quirks and you're learning how to be cohesive as opposed to, okay, we dating when you, hopefully when you're dating, you go to your house and she go to hers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why some people become so comfortable with shacking. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, because they don't want the responsibility. Because when it's all said and done, you, I'm out, you out, whoever leaving. You can pick up and walk. But marriage is work. Marriage is work. And the thing is this, I, I admire those that wait. If you're a young person and you decide to wait in, in before you have children, because it gives you a chance to learn each other. And it gives you a chance to prepare for children as opposed to being married two years and now you got a baby. Because number one, that priority becomes, your your responsibility shift. comes greater. Her, her attention, you know, yeah, there's just a shift and you haven't even learned each other. So now you got to learn about this other little person who adds more yeah. to the, yeah, more yeah. to it. Add more spice to it, I can't tell you. Or more salt, how you want to say it. 
And so you 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 grow in love, you, you grow into know one another, you know, so you cannot take advice, especially if you gotta weigh it out. You understand? Some people can give, some, a lot of people give you advice based on their situation and their circumstances and not it's not broad enough. You understand it's not broad enough. They're not looking outside of the box. They only can see their fail their failed situation or their bad situation or their bad encounters. You understand? So that a lot of times that's where they're shooting from. That's where they're giving you advice from. This is You understand? So we have to, you know, weigh that thing out. The best advice that you can get, let, let's go to the book. What does the book say? You understand? What does God say concerning this situation? Um many days, many days you might either turn down that plate, but like I said, how bad do you want it? You understand? How bad does she want it? When I marry people, I always give them the, the, the love versus the commitment speech. You understand? Mm -hmm. And if you're mm -hmm. committed, it, it, the love will come back. You understand? But at the first sign of trouble, because you're not committed, that, that it's over. It's over. She don't love me the way she used to. Or she don't or he don't love me like he did in the beginning. Okay. We know love come and go. You understand? But if you're committed, love will come back again. But you but what you learn is how to look beyond. Love will keep you and love will sustain you, but you'll find that God factors with really holding this thing together. And then you'll find love to be so much more spiritual than it is physical. Let me say for the people in the cheap seats, you'll find out that love is more spiritual than it is in the physical. You understand? So we can run that down on, on, on another time. On another time. Make, oh, we got to make note of that. You mm -hmm. understand? So these things, keep folk out of your business. Folk that don't mean you no good. Keep, 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 keep them out of your business. You know, if they only can see it one way. You definitely don't want to be bothered with them. Um, Okay, so speaking, you know, words are so important that we are going to give an account of what we say when we stand before the Lord Jesus. One scripture says you're going to have to give an account for every idle word, every idle word. And so when I look at people and I hear people talk, oh my goodness, and, and the way they talk to their spouse or their mate, some things they say to one another, I just shake my head because one, I can't believe that one, how you talk to them like that. And then two, that they accept how you talk to them like that. Because you're just not going to talk to me any kind of way because I'm going to go in the other room. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go in the other room. And until I've had enough, until I've had enough, and once I've had enough, I ain't going to bring out the big guns. Praise God. But I'm, I'm going to be as subtle as possible because if nothing else, I want this thing to work like nobody's business. Hi, Nai. Hi, Rosalind. Hey, Ros. You know, we we um we need to understand that we need to be operating in love. In love. You know, um I struggle with I'm I'm, I'm the term of the cheap thing. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to always come at you in the essence of love because that's why God is into words of affirmation God is into and the thing is this I thought about that thing when um when we started this and I was like oh no I'm going to have an affirmation wall because I don't want kids I, I, I need them to focus on something else the Bible says so a man thinketh than he is. So I need to begin to help with the mindset change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There has to be a mindset. God's words of affirmation are throughout the Bible. So it's not like I'm not telling you anything that you don't know. I, I remember my husband and my god sister told me one day, they was like, she was like, if that's what the area that you struggle, you get you some index cards and you put them on the wall. Listen, if self-esteem self is your struggle, then you get you some a word, a affirmation wall. Because this is in the Bible. Listen, he said, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Mm -hmm. 
told you that before. So listen, can you imagine your man or your woman telling you, I have loved you with an everlasting love? Yeah. I'll be like my girl, Nadia Cole. This will be. Okay? And that, that who say that? That's, That's right. Nelly Cole said, this will be an everlasting love, right? So here we got that in Jeremiah 31 and 3. And then it says, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. Whoop! Have mercy. Isaiah 43 and 1. Can you imagine God calling you by your name? You'd be like, ah! God call my name. That's and, but that's how much He loves you. And those are He's telling you, you are mine. But we don't. We have yet to start living up to our own purpose and potential in Christ Jesus. Listen, listen. Those, listen. I'm gonna tell you what came to my when, when, when she said that God spoke to me. You know, because. Some of y'all in an argument, y'all get an argument with y'all spouse or, or y'all boyfriend, y'all girlfriend, and they so busy, they so busy calling you them French word. That ain't your name. That ain't your name. And you and you answering them by arguing with them. First of all, my name is Elijah. You gonna call me something that is not my name? I'm done. Cause you done took this conversation or this argument to a whole nother level. And I tell people, there's nothing wrong with you having an argument. There's nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. But it's the art of arguing that people have to learn. You understand? Mm -hmm. My wife had to learn it because she would, whatever came up, she was saying, now I wasn't French, but words hurt. Okay? I said, you can't say that. Don't tell me what to say. I said, but you can't. But you understand, over time, she learned that, yeah, choose your words wisely because... We keep telling y'all, once the word go forth, damage. Damage can't, listen, mm -hmm. words hurt. Words hurt. You understand? And it's the healing process, sometimes folk never recover. But sometimes people get over it because they want to get over it. But in the back of their mind, they're waiting for you to do it again or say it again. My brothers and sisters, we, listen. Furthermore, it says, it says listen. The Apostle Paul tells us like this. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs in other words you got to be speaking words that's going to build your relationship up okay okay um that if it, it may benefit those who listen and that's how you want to speak to whatever you say to a person you want to be able to build them up you want to speak words that's going to help them <clears throat> Words that's going to encourage them, even in your relationship. You understand? Even in your relationship, um, you know, uh, I, I, I'm looking for words of comfort. I'm looking for words that will strengthen my wife and, and empower my wife. But I hope that she's looking for the same words for me, even when it comes to my children. I'm going to always speak positivity into the lives of my children. I'm always going to be praying for and building them up. But in the same token, I'm going to be teaching them the difference between right and wrong. Understand? Um, that's not your friend. Why you say that's not my friend? See how they act. See what they said. You know, um, 55 years I've been on this earth. I can tell. I listen. I can tell a fake from a phony in a minute. You, you understand? I can tell a fake from a phony in a minute. So. You know, oftentimes our children don't like to hear it, but oftentimes we have spoken to our children and they had to come back and be like, yeah, you was right. Because now you and so-and-so ain't friends no more. Tried to warn you. Tried to tell you. Yes, Kim. This Don't let the smooth taste or the smooth look fool you. Yeah. Yeah. I, it used to be very venomous. Yeah. Very yeah. venomous. And, and um... It, it, it didn't get anywhere. So, and, and my husband hates the silent treatment, but sometimes that silent treatment is what I need to... Because once you put them out there, you can't take them back. Once you put those words out there, you know, you can't... It, it's, it's not like you can grab them. You know? Um, I had somebody tell me some 
harsh and mean things. And, 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 you know, I walked away from it. I was like, I was like, dang. Wow. What? Did they say that? And my husband was like, what? He, w he was conflicted. But now that the words is out there, and then, you know, we come in contact with each other. I, I don't really know how to take you. I don't know how to take you. Because you done said some things that if it was for the normal person, I, I think anybody who knows me, I'm one of those people that can take you or leave you. And if I find you to be corny, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for the lack of a better word, I really don't choose, I choose not to be bothered with you. Because it's hard for you. You can't show, what you already showed me is what I see. And, 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 and then the thing is this, that's my perception. You can be a sweetheart, but what you showed me was corny. So it's hard for me to get over that hump. And nine times out of ten, if you showed me corny, you corny. <laughs> I, 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 I'm yeah. just saying. Yeah. I mean, because I thank God for that gift of discernment because I can recognize foolishness when I see it. You know, and, and, and even when relating to the kids, they just, you know, I have girls. So when I, and I keep it straight 100. Listen, I don't have time to be beating around the bush with you because the world not going to beat around the bush with you. They're going to lump you up and throw you to the side. So I have to keep it 100. And I'll tell them something and they'll be like, that pill was really hard to swallow. But you either swallow that pill or you suffer the consequences. So if you choose the, the latter and, and, and just to su suffer the consequences, number one, they too embarrassed to uh, let me know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the consequence was, but I'm, I'm not going to tell you I told you so, but we we as people always try tell to. You, but her actions is going to show you that she told you so. Mm-hmm. And, and don't complain to me about it, cause see, then I'll say, "Well, what you telling me for?" Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's my response. I'm just, I, I, I'm, I'm saying because sometimes we put ourselves in situations dealing with people, knowing that we're not going to get the same energy that we put out, or the same love. I have met so many people who have been like, "I can't fool with them because I love them like this," and um, every time I turn around when I ask them from something they can't give me what I asked for okay but you are accountable for you and what you do is unselfish unwavering then you keep being you you don't let anybody dictate you because mm -hmm. you know what you can only be the best you you can be that's, it. that's all you can be you can only be responsible for you how you react how you handle things you understand um and when you stand before God, they're not going to ask you about how Pastor Dana act. They're going to ask me about me. God going to me. It's all about me, me and God, me and God. And so, so you can't be held accountable for somebody else's actions. You understand? Um, Reverend Taylor, you should say it like this. It does not matter what you think of me, but it does matter what I think of you. And for a long time, I had no clue as to what that meant. I had no clue at all. You know, and one day I asked him, and he still wouldn't explain to me. He said, you'll understand it better by and by. And one day I got it. And when I got it, I said, oh, that's what that meant. You understand? So you can only be held accountable for your actions, for the things that you say. We just read in the scripture that every idle word that come out your mouth, God is going to hold you accountable for. It. You got to be accountable for this. And so, and, and like I took, see, we always talk about our transparency. I can tell you that, that, that is me. And some things I'd be like, Lord, help me to just shut up. Because sometimes you just need to shut up. Sometimes she said, like, did you really just say that? Funny stuff. And stuff be like, I can't believe you just said that. <laughs> you understand? But we keep it real. We keep it real. What's that? I have stepped all the way back from a lot of people, but I have peace. I can only be accountable for myself. This is so. Right. 
And girl, let me tell you something. That's that rake and shovel ministry. That's it. Might as well call it the rake and shovel because you're going to rake in what you need and shovel out what you don't. But you also need to understand this. I, I, I had a situation that I was dealing with and I had to tell the young lady, I said, listen, the drama that you got going on will not disturb my peace. So for this situation, I got to cut it off. Because I don't bother nobody and I don't want drama knocking at my door. Because drama don't know what's on the other side of my door. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, yeah. and, and it's, it's not that you got to get physical about it, but I serve a true and living God. And yeah. if I really want to get you, that's right, that's right. I'll, I'll stick the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy, Holy Ghost. Ghost. Don't give them no rest. You don't give them no peace. Don't do give right. them this do right. until you you got to come back by me. So they do better. right. You know, it, so I don't sacrifice my peace. It, it ain't even about me. God don't give them the rest of they do right. You just got to do right. Just do right. Understand? So so um. Sister say? nine, it, it's okay to cut folks off and just say okay. Mm -hmm. I, I I got to do this and I got to leave you where you where are because some people you can't you can't. See, the problem is, is that we try to bring everybody over into our new season. And they were really old season folk. Their, their job was just to get us to the new season. You know? I heard a message say, leave your lot behind. No Listen, I'm going to hit you one better. Moses said, God told Moses, oh, this generation is not going into the promised land. <laughs> See, so some of them old folks, you got to leave because they're not going to see the promised land. They're not meant for you to, to go over into your promised mm -hmm. land. But you know what? Once you get there, you got to love them from afar. Pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for them. The Bible says when we pray for them, we, we heat coals of fire upon their head. Pray for them. You understand? Listen, in the process, God is blessing you. You understand? So, um... Some 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 seasons is only for a moment. You understand? And if it be God's will, that season that not that season, but that person will show up in your new season, but there'll be a much better crop. So now you say folks want to talk about the baby. I know they ain't talking about little mama. Cause that's a baby. And my thing is is if you got folks that's wanna talk about the baby. If you're an innocent baby, a child, close that chapter quick. Girl, you got to get rid of them. Close that chapter. But my thing is this, and I think that we we um so we 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 need to be mindful. What's the conversation? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. What's the conversation? Is it something that you're taking offense to because it might be some truth to it, or if it's is it just being mean? There, and see, there's a difference yeah. Yeah. because then you got to really rethink. Well, are they saying this for my betterment? But it's all, my thing is this, anything, I always present, I tell people this, it's how you present it, right? I always use the Cosby Show analogy because I thought that was the best analogy that um, I could have given. Mm -hmm. The thing is, when Bill Cosby told Vanessa about how she uh, presented the husband, um, she, he asked him, did you like steak? He said, oh, I love a good steak. And mm -hmm. he named the type of cut that he liked. He liked potatoes and he liked the tossed salad. And um, Bill Cosby says, now imagine all that served on a garbage can lid. So it depends on how it's being presented to you. Because mm -hmm. like Pastor Lewis said, there's words of constructive criticism that that are there to edify and build and it could be just to break down that right there just let me i'm gonna break this down so that you can start better from this point on because if you ever deal with clay clay can be smooth as you build and develop a crack right there in the middle mm -hmm. and then you want to really break it all the way back down to where you started to re-smooth it back up Okay, so I think you have to be mindful. I've been doing that. I know Trinity is my blessing, so why wouldn't the enemy attack through family? Because he don't care who he use. Enemy don't Did care who he how, how much room does the enemy need to get in? How much room does the enemy need to get in? You understand? And he don't care who he use. I just had this conversation with my older brother the other day. 
the enemy don't care how he come at you. You understand? Whatever door or whatever window is open or whatever um, weakness he see, whatever crack he see, you understand? Um, water flow in the area of least resistance. You understand? The, 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 the leak could be anywhere in the water. Drip might be here. But when you open up that wall, you see where it's dripping, but you don't see where it's going. Where, 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 why? It's dripping on the left, but it still is coming through on the right. You understand? So you, 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 that's how the enemy likes to attack us. But if what they're saying is hurtful to you and hurtful to the baby, them the folk you got to pray about. I mean, listen, the thing about it is that we can't have everybody in our life. We That's listen, it. and we begin to say, "Okay, God, what is your will concerning me and Good them? Yep. Let your will be done, 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 God." And if God gotta break it up, I don't care how much the love ties are. I don't care how strong your feelings are. If God gotta do the separation, God know how to cut it, and we're to cut it. And you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you something. Real talk. If you think about it, if it's such a struggle. This is how the enemy sets you up for um, emotional and verbal abuse. This is this is what he does because that is considered domestic violence. <laughs> Hi, Joy. That's the best domestic violence. And the thing is, verbal abuse is is worse than physical abuse. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. worse than physical abuse, and that's just the reality. So we always have to be mindful. Who we let pour into us. Yes, sir. Who we let pour into us. Because bitter and sweet can't flow from the same well, fountain. Say that. Look at what you just said, Sister Nine. Look at just what you said. Some folk you can't pray with. Some folk are not ready to receive the word of God. You understand? You 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 want. The opportunity for all these things mm -hmm. to come apart lie with God. All this opportunity lies with God. You understand? Um, because I'm going to tell you like this. You live the best godly life you can according to the way God will have you to live. And then you'll see them that you tried to talk to, them that you tried to pray for in, in, in open. But now you're praying and talking to them with God behind the scenes. Be the ones that pick up the phone, call you late in the midnight hour, asking you for prayer and asking you, how do you do it? You don't know how many times I've gotten calls from family members wondering how you do it. How am I, how, how are you able to stand? You understand? And, and, me, and me and my wife praying for more. God save them. God save them. God, God, God bring salvation bring into their life. You know, bring a change. You understand? And when the change come, God let them know that it's you. That's it. You understand? Listen. I, my wife hate me, hate me saying my mother's name said, but I'm the black sheep of the family, and I'm okay with that. And the reason why I say that because there's some things I just don't allow, and I'm not going to allow. You understand? I, and I'm not going to allow. And then it took them a while, but they respect it. They respect it more so now than they did in the beginning. You understand? But you got to draw the line and stand. Somewhere you got to be able to stand. You know, for God I'll live and for God I'll die. I don't care what they say. I don't care who like it and don't like it. This is between me and God. I'm trying to get into heaven. Jesus. I, I want to see Jesus. You understand? But, the, but, but when you connect yourself, hear what I'm about to tell you. When you connect yourself with the right people and the right sort, when Jesus preached and his disciples, and, 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 he, and he preached, I, can't, I think it's in St. John somewhere. I, I, I'll look it up for you later if you, if you need to contact um, Pastor Dana. But when he, when he finished the message, they said, this is a hard pill. This is a hard thing for us to swallow. He said, okay. And the Bible says that some of his disciples turned and walked away. And, and when Jesus, when he was questioned, Jesus said, well, are you going to leave me? They looked at Jesus and said, to whom shall we go? For in you, we, you only the one that has eternal life for us. You understand what I'm saying? So in other words, what I'm saying to you is that you have to make your stand with God. God does the drawing, hello here, mm -hmm. and God know how to chase them, and God does the separating. Yep. You understand? So, 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 the same people that didn't want to hear you before will be the same ones that'll be running back, mm -hmm, trying to hear what 
what you got to say. That's right, Joy. Sometimes you got to let go and let God. Yeah, let him go. <laughs> Let them go. We talk about that season. Because they will take you on a, a emotional roller, roller coaster. coaster. Hello Woo. here. Listen, you and, 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 and that's not listen. He got listen. He promised to give you peace. That's it. Peace. Yep. Be still. Hello here. All right. That's what Mama did. Um, oh. in, interpretation. But I'm just telling y'all. You got to know what is of God. You understand? And pray for them behind the scenes. Pray. Listen. And God will change the situation. This God will change the situation. God will strengthen you. And listen, God, whatever your will is concerning this situation, God, I need your will to be done because I'm limited. But I know, God, you got all power and that you can do anything. So this situation, God, I'm leaving it with you. And the thing is this. I, told I love you. you. Love y'all. Uh huh. And But I told you that uh, the, it becomes the kill, steal, and destroy. The thing is this, if you have peace, what is his job but to disrupt your peace? Mm -hmm. So you need to be mindful. That's why you have to just, when, um, when they get ready to talk about tea, you give them a little honey. Say, baby, I love you, but I don't have time for that. That's right, Joy. You, you complaining. <laughs> baby, I love you, but I don't have time for that. That's right, Joy. You know, we, you, you, when your mindset change, you surround yourself that are like with like-minded people. My my um, God's sister says iron sharpens iron sharpens iron. Mm -hmm. Now we're not sitting here preaching one to another, mm -hmm. but to encourage you and to know that I'm, and offer you words of affirmation. Okay, I'm always going to offer at words. Of, listen. Even when I don't understand, I, and I'll tell him, what the heck? What they doing? Mm -hmm. Lord bless them, because mm -hmm. you know. Because it ain't for me to know. It ain't for me to know. <laughs> it ain't for me to know, because God could be taking, to, taking you somewhere totally behind the scenes for a whole different season than mm -hmm. what I'm privy to. Mm -hmm. I ain't God. I don't know your life. Mm -hmm. Listen, listen. I, I got I got to add something to that. I got to add something to that, um, um, cousin Joy. Now, when you get people like-minded people, when you begin to group yourself with, with, with the same purpose, that's why the scripture says, "How can two walk together unless they be in agreement?" Now, if she and I are not in agreement, there's going to be some friction. There's going to be some turmoil. There's going to be some rocky road. There's going to be an earthquake. Because we're not in agreement, you understand? But we're in this thing together. We're no longer one. The Bible says no longer two, but one. One flesh, you understand? So she and I have to be in agreement in order to make this thing work. So when you get around like-minded people, one can chase a thousand, two can chase ten thousand. We're working for the same purpose. We're moving in toward the same goal. So let me say, um, I, I just feel by myself. You're not by yourself. You got you. God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. You're not by yourself. Why? Because he promised never to leave you. Never to never to forsake you. So you're not by yourself. And then God gives the increase. God gives the increase. You could be standing in the supermarket line. And somebody just strike up a conversation that speaks to you. That 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 is that that some of the things that they're saying, they're going through the same thing you're going through. Now you giving them some insight at the same time they giving you some insight and you're growing and you're growing and you're growing. Where? In the supermarket line. You know, praise God. Praise God. You know, so we got to have the right words. Yeah, I just went back to look at Joy's stuff. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Because then so you listen, God can work it out. And there's some things that we have to know that only God can fix. Only God can fix it. You got to let God work it out. You know, you got to listen. Been there. Been there. Been there. Had some things that only God can work out. I work with a guy. It took God to work that thing out. It took God to work that thing out. Listen, I have peace. I don't let nobody bother my peace. You not go... Listen. That... that, that 
sometimes you we, we, we have to understand that we have to encourage ourselves. And the thing is this, it shouldn't even be so much of us encouraging ourselves when we're dealing with other people. My thing is this, if you know God's love language to you in the area of affirmation, how much he loves you, how much he cares for you, it, this it wouldn't be a struggle. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. John 15 and 9. Just listen. <sighs> abide in his love. Just, just abide in his love. You. Knowing that he loves you. I don't care what you think of me. Let, let, let but me, God loves me. Let, let, let me. Let me share it to you like this. Let me share it to you like this. One scripture says, just like we like to give good gifts unto our children, so much more does our Heavenly Father like to give gifts to us, to them that love Him. So think about the, your love that you have for your child. And then think about God having that same love multiplied by a hundred for you. For you. And rest in that. Rest in that. And I'm telling you, God know how to come and wrap his arms around us when you ask him to, when you tell him to. God, please come and comfort me. Come and hold me. Come and rock me. God can do it. God can do it. Listen, God has been making provisions for us since the beginning. Out of love. He gave us a cool, he created us in a cool, soothing smooth place mm -hmm. overflowing with all that we needed out of love even when they got kicked out because mm -hmm. of their disobedience mm -hmm. God still provided out of love mm -hmm. God supplied a sacrificial lamb mm -hmm. out of love boom and even when that sacrificial lamb came mm -hmm. He sent you something else. It's called a comforter. Mm -hmm. Out of love to keep you a comforter. When you think of comforter, right? You think of that nice fluffy uh, blanket that you got. That on them cold winter nights that you just want to wrap yourself up. To make you feel so safe and warm. Mm -hmm. The same thing with God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of this <laughs> is out of love. So when we talk about love, you, knowing your love language... God is your first validation. <coughs> the very essence of who God is, is love. The very being. The Bible says that God is love. You understand? So we understand. Not like your, 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 yours and my type of love. You understand? Because when folk get upset with one another, they stop they stop talking to each other. They don't want to call each other. They don't want to be bothered with nobody. Now I'm not, talking about, I'm not talking about that love. I'm talking about the love that surpasses all understanding. Mm -hmm. You know, one scripture says why we were deserving of hell. Why we were yet in our sins and our trespasses. He sent Jesus to die in our stead. Why? Because he loved us so. Now, now to comprehend God's love, you understand? You, you, I don't. I don't think we'll ever be able to comprehend the fullness of His love. You understand? Because God loves us in a way that just blows our mind. Just it, it, it truly blows our mind. So that's why when the scripture says, "Hope, oh, brother Jackie, listen." That's why when the scripture says that we ought to love our wife like Christ loved the church in a mind blowing way. Mm -hmm. In a mind blowing way. Like I said, that's a whole another. That's a whole another thing. Understand? But you want to be in a relationship, ladies, with, 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 with somebody that you want to be in a marriage that blows your mind. You want to be in a marriage that blows your mind. You want to be in a marriage and be like, man, God, that, now that was awesome. I wouldn't even think about that. I'm so glad she prepared my favorite meal today. You understand? I, I get in the bed and she just rubbed my shoulder on the right spot. She just rubbed my back in the right ear. My. She, I don't know how she knew I needed that, but I thank you, God. You understand? You know, he said the right things to me. You know, he, um, you know, held my hand right when I needed somebody to hold my hand. Those are things that God know how to do for us. You understand? God sent mother love right when I needed somebody to say, baby, I love you. God knows how. The thing I tell people all the time, 
God knows how to send us and gives us those things when we don't even know that we need them mm -hmm. until they happen. It'd be like, wow, that is just what I needed. That's how God operates. You didn't know you needed that, but God knew it. That's so why he sent somebody to show you that. He sent somebody to give you that. You understand? You know, so my, my, I want to cry. My thing is that you have to know God is always showing you his love language. God is always mm -hmm. showing you his love mm -hmm. language. God is always showing you who he is. God is always showing you what he can do. You understand? God never fails. We fail God. <laughs> this is that's my next accomplishment in the works. <laughs> yes, that's beautiful. And and once we allow God in, once you, you listen, you'll never find anybody better like better than God. You'll never find nobody like God. You know, somebody said, Won't you let him in? And, I, and I'm pleading to you tonight, let him in. Let him in. You know? Tell God I receive you. Say, God, come on in, come on in. Come on in. You know? But you know what? Joy said, okay, always on time. But see, he knows he knows what you need. And that's with love. When you love somebody, you're in tune to them. You're in tune. You know. And, and, and because he loves us, not so much that we love him, but because he loves us. He, what do you mean you're trying to let him in? All right. Let's go down the street. Come on. Come on. on the street. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So when you tell God, God, come in. God, I open up my heart to you. God, I need to feel you. God, listen. Because mm. he's part one of the affirmations is touch. And don't think he ain't part of that too. We'll talk about that later. And, he, but. and, he, and he'll touch you. He'll, he'll touch you mm -hmm. in a way. Yes, then. Why? Because I'm open. You confess it with your mouth. And you believe it by faith and let him in and watch him come in. You watch, say, tell him. Be, the thing about God, you can be real with God because God is real. You can be truthful with God because God, listen, you want God to be on time. You get, begin to ask yourself, am I in a place? Am I in that position? You understand? You can't get to the bus stop if the bus come at 845 and you get to the bus stop at 847. <laughs> you missed it. Because you were there on time. The thing about God, if you say, God, come into my life, I'm, I'm ready to receive you. Listen, open up. God going to come right in. God going to, based on what you said. Now, the thing about it now, once he come in, once he come in, give you some instructions. Clean me up. Wash me up. Change this situation. Change it. And then believe that he's going to do just what you ask him to. Yeah, we were. We were born with him in. Yes, we were. Yes, we were. I can listen. When he blew into Adam, Adam became a living soul. A part of him, he blew into Adam, and then Adam became a living soul. But what man has done with the spirit of God that lives within us, we put him on the shelf. We put him on the shelf. <laughs> Always on time. Always on time. That's... That, it's us that's late. That's right. What you got tonight? Come, God, into my life. I am ready to receive. God bless her in the name of Jesus. God, I want you to come into her life in a way, oh God, that will knock her off her feet. That she won't have to second guess God if it's you, but God, that she'll know it's you. I decree and I declare it right now in the precious name of Jesus that you'll meet her need, God, today, today, on tonight, oh God, that you will show up. And show her who you are. In Jesus name. In Jesus, Jesus name. name. I decree and declare it right now. Her, according to her confession. Come into my life. Yes. God come yes. into my yes. life. Yes. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now tell him God thank you. Tell him God. Tell, tell God thank you. Thank you. Because God ain't like us. God ain't like. He that believeth have. You have it before you have it. Before it's manifested in the name of Jesus. Now you begin to walk like you believe it. Hmm. Walk like you somebody. Walk. Listen, you got to walk this thing out. Because like when you walk it out, 
you'll find that this thing begins to grow and, is, and, 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 and he, you'll grow in him. What do I mean? When I say walk it out, spend time with him, talk to him and everything. God, good morning. Thank you, God, for waking me up this morning. God, what should I put on this morning? God, what should I eat this morning? You know what? People are like, oh, that's a little bit excessive. No, it's just that real. Because the thing is this. You want to lose weight, but you don't want to exercise. Mm -hmm. Come on now. You're you don't you want you want you want to feel God. You want God to dwell in you. Well, we got to break through some muck and mire because sin lived there a little bit too long. Mm. Okay, so we got to break through. Mm. Hallelujah, God. Mm. We got to break through some stuff. You so now? you, as I'm walking this out, huh? Take them off the shelf. Things is just falling off. Falling off. But you got to walk it out. So you got to begin to walk this thing out. I believe God is within me because he said he would never leave me nor forsake me. Now I ask God to begin to stir up what's in me. Take him off the shelf. And but my thing is this. Don't don't let your Holy Ghost die of malnutrition. You got to feed it. Got to feed him. Feed you him. got to feed it. Got to feed him. My God. My God. My God. My God. Him. God will meet you right where you are at in order to bring you up. <laughs> In order to bring you up. And that's what we talk about. That's what we talk about. You, you kiss your baby every day. You hug on your baby every day. You talk to your baby every day. I want you to kiss the face of God every morning. I want you to love on God. Hello, yeah. I'm, yeah I, listen, listen. God, lo listen. God loves when we say, Lord, I love you. God, I thank you. You want to get some flowers from God? Take him off the shelf. Take him off the shelf. Listen, I'm gonna tell you something, Nye. I'm gonna tell you something. Sometimes when you turn, when not sometimes, when you want to get in contact with God and you turn that plate down and you begin to seek God, the Bible says the fervent, effectual prayers of the righteous availeth much. So once that plate is turned down and you purpose in your heart that I'm going to meet God because I want to see God. God, I want to see your face and not your hand. Honey, baby, hmm. won't God show up? Every time. Every time. Every time. Won't he show up? Every time. Hmm. Hmm. That's why. Huh. That's why you got to put the work in to make your life bad. Girl. Listen. Anything worth having is worth working for. So my thing is this. The, the, if you want Jesus in your life, you got to work to keep him. That's it. Just like you got to work to keep that man or that woman in the natural, you got to work to keep that man in the spirit. There you go. Hello. Hello. I'm just Hello. saying. <laughs> you you don't feel like washing your body. You don't feel like cooking. Uh, I'm going to pass on I, that, bro. I, 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 I ain't going to that house. You don't want to work. <laughs> so if you don't want to work, you don't want to eat. Same thing with God. He's not an ATM. You can't make you can't keep making withdrawals and not make no deposits. Amen. Amen. Same thing with God. So many victories have been won by the people and the children of God just because they showed up prepared. For the battle Just because they were faithful to say God I'm here I'm ready And God said alright I'm about to fight for you My favorite story I'm about to fight for you My favorite story Because they came ready and prepared They had enough faith mm -hmm. To believe that if we go down and fight God will fight for us mm -hmm. and So that's what I need you to do Go in ready We're praying for you. We're praying for you. But I want you to get in the spirit of expectation. That word, whatever you say to God, you need to believe God. Hear what I'm saying? You, 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 whatever you say to God, you need to believe God. If I send you a million scriptures and you read them, but you don't believe what you're reading, they profit you nothing. That's right. They profit you nothing. I told you at the beginning, death and life are... In your tongue. So if you're not speaking life to, to the situation, if you're not applying the scriptures that we're giving you, it will all be for naught. So, so hear what I'm saying. Hear what I'm saying. Hear what I'm saying. Help me, God. 
I need your help, Lord. Now I believe God is going to help you. Let's just start there. God, I need you, need your help. You understand? I gave you another scripture. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He's a present help in a time of trouble. Write it down. Write it down. Take this video. Play it back. He's a present help in a time of trouble. He will never leave you nor forsake you. You ever seen that little picture where the little boy says, I know I'm somebody because God didn't make no junk? Hear what I'm saying. Stand on that. Stand on that. Stand on that. Get your Bible. Get your Bible. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. I can't make it no plainer, no simpler than what I'm about to tell you right now because I feel the anointing. I feel God. I feel God. Get your Bible. Put your Bible like my arms are folded. Hug it. Or put it on the floor and kneel on it. Are you listening to me? And tell God, says, God, I'm kneeling. I'm, I'm standing on your word, God. I believe you, God. Put your word in my heart, God. Put your word in my heart, God. Help me to understand. See, the problem is that you're so busy talking to us and talking to other people, you need to be talking to God like you're talking to us and to other people. We done went way over our time, but God is here. You understand? We're going to always be here for you. We ain't nothing but a text and a phone call away. What you say, bro, Mario? Oh, Monica. <laughs> e, why does God favor you so when he delivers you the answer? Listen, we thank you so much for joining us. We have gone over our time, and it is hard when it's a good topic of discussion. Whew. We will continue with uh, words of affirmation because I, I guess that it plays an intricate part. Um, we thank you every week for joining us on Lipstick Chronicles. I always tell you that we are a text, a uh, messenger, a phone call. Now you know we love you to the moon and back. And, 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 and this is what God has called us to do. It's Bless you, Mario. I love you, man. Love it, it's, you, man. It, it's, it's needed. It's needed. There's a time where we cannot lo no longer walk in this self-contained, uh, for lack of a better word, this self-condemnation. We can no longer walk in self-condemnation mm -hmm. because he said in his word that he came to set the captives free mm -hmm. and free indeed. And the thing is, is the Bible tells us where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Now, now you ask the God to come in, walk in your freedom, walk like you know you say, hey, walk like you know God is walking with you. That's it. <laughs> In every way your feet shall tread. Shall be blessed. Shall be blessed. And so we thank you. We are here. My cousin Joy, you know I love you to the moon and back. Love you to the moon and back. And I'm glad that you, you took the time to join us. Because I know you have like a major time difference. So I thank you for even making the time to join us. And those of you that take the time out every week at 6 o'clock. Um, God is doing some things with us. Mm -hmm. there you go. Look at me. God is doing some great things with us. And we're looking for God to do so much more. So we solicit your prayers. We solicit, pray for us. And I'm, listen. If you can't pray for us, don't talk about us. Hey, how about that? Yes. Talk about it. The more you talk, we going to keep on praying. We going to keep on doing. Talk about it. Talk about it. Because, you know, listen, man. Every time the devil shows his ugly head, every time the devil shows his ugly head, that make me want to fight even harder. You understand? So I ain't worried about you talking about me, but what I'm asking you is to pray with us and pray for us as we move forward in God, as we operate in those things that my brother spoke to us about, <coughs> the things that my brother encouraged us in the area. And we're moving on with God. We're moving in God. So keep us in your prayer. I thank God for your support. Continue to tune in. Throw your questions at us. Throw your comments at us. And we're going to move in Jesus' name. Um, want to share some things with you. Um, 
Dana's Babies Virtual Homework and Tutorial Support will be opening on next week in time for the children to go to school. So if you know somebody who, who is at home with a grandparent who does not understand or the technology, um, there is a cost. It's not something that's going to break your bank because, um, hey, I got to pay for the internet. Yeah, I got an overhead. Um, but it's nothing to break you. To break you, I thank you for all that gave to the um, fundraiser. I thank you because God just keeps making a way. On I told you on last week that I stopped the fundraiser, and God has. He just continued to show up. I'm walking this thing out by faith. We're walking this thing out by faith. We're walking into our next level by faith. So just keep us uplifted. I will share the flyer. If you can, share it with your friends. Um, this will be uploaded to YouTube. We'll see you on Thursday at the Master's Table. We'll see you on Sunday. Um... As we bring manna from heaven at 9 o'clock, it will be brought this week by Pastor Lewis. Um, and, I, and, I, and I say, um, just keep us in prayer. Just keep us in prayer. Um, we love you with the love of God. Pastor Lewis, will you close us out in prayer? Amen. If you bow your heads, eternal God, our Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for what our eyes have seen and for what our ears have heard. We thank you, Father, for your spirit that came, O oh God, and fell in this place, Father, and fell yes. upon your people, O oh God like rain, oh God. I pray, oh God, that they will take your word from this place, oh God. Take the anointing, oh God, that they have on their hearts right now, oh God, and share it with others, oh God. Apply them to their lives, oh God, and live by it, God, according to your holy word, Father God. I want to thank you, God, for your healing power and your delivering power, oh God, and your saving power, Father, in the name of Jesus. Now, touch their hearts, oh God, elevate their minds, oh God, take them to higher heights and deeper depths, in Christ Jesus, because you are God, and with you, God, all things are possible. So we stand on your word, and we stand on your promises, God. We love you, and we kiss your face, Father, in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you, God, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, and praise God. Until we meet again. God bless you. Love you. Have a great rest of your week.